In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, one of our advanced integration techniques called partial fraction decomposition. Sometimes it's just called partial fractions for short. And uh, let's let's start off by talking about where where is this guy used? What what's he used for? Well, the goal of partial fractions is to rewrite a rational expression. So that's a, a fraction where you have a polynomial over a polynomial as a sum of simpler rational expressions. And the key word here is the word sum. We'd like to take, in short, we'd like to take a big, ugly rational expression and break it apart into a little rational expression plus another little one plus another one perhaps, uh, but at least of two, but break that big rational expression into bite-sized pieces that are being added or subtracted together. All right, now, for what purpose? Like, what? why do we care to do that? Like, what's the point of that? Well, what we're trying to do here is integrate these big, ugly, rational expressions, but the problem is, is when they're too big or too ugly, we don't have any good rules to integrate those guys. Uh, log rule usually doesn't work. U substitution doesn't work. None of our, our normal rules uh, work. So if we could somehow rewrite this uh, integrand, right, the big ugly rational expression as a sum of smaller rational expressions, then we could use the sum and difference rule and simply integrate each individual guy. But that assumes that we have it broken down into a sum of a lot of different pieces. And so in short, when we do partial fraction decomposition, the uh, the resulting expression that's all broken down is easier to integrate. And that, that's really the ultimate objective here. All right, so let me, let me show you one in practice here. Uh, let's say somebody asked us to integrate this. All right, so, you know, normal calculus student, they would look at this. Uh, I, I know what they would probably try. They, they might see this fraction and maybe think like the log rule, perhaps, you know, maybe a du over u. But we click uh, quickly see if, if the u is x squared plus 2x minus 15, then the du would be, what what is that, 2x plus 2? It doesn't look anything like 3x plus 7. So it looks like the log rule is out. Uh, can't really be u substitution because there's no real composition going on. Um, there's just nothing. I mean, there's there's just nothing that we have. But what if you just magically knew? Now I know we don't know how to do partial fraction decomposition right now. But if uh, if I snap my fingers and I said, you know what? I'm just going to tell you this is the same as this. Now, at the very least, you could check me, you could verify this. I'm not going to take the time to do this in this video, but we know how to add fractions. Uh, you could get a common denominator and all that good stuff. And I, I'd encourage you maybe on your paper right now, go ahead and add these two guys, add, an, add them together, get a common denominator, and, and hopefully you'll see the, the sum of these two terms would wind up being this guy, which means that these two guys here are the same. Now, why, why do I care? Well, this integral here was uh, honestly pretty pretty difficult because I didn't know how to do it. But if you somehow knew that you could decompose this big, ugly rational expression into this term plus this term, then, uh, then I think we'd be good to go because I can integrate this term. That's a, a simple log rule. And then plus this guy's integral. So I can actually integrate, you know, really both of those terms. So if I get rid of... All the stuff I was writing earlier then uh, let's let's do that real quickly all right I'll, I'll just do it right now um, you could pull a 2 out the 2 is not really necessary uh, you'd have 2 and then the integral of 1 over x minus 3 would be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 and then plus the integral of 1 over x plus 5 would be natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5 uh, with a plus c on the end and we are done right that's that's this guy's integral um, in fact it's the original integrals answer right and the only way we were able to do this was to decompose it into these two bite-sized pieces now how did i know that well we'll get to that later but uh, that's really at the heart of partial fraction decomposition rewriting a big ugly rational expression as a sum of simpler rational expressions, which made it easier to integrate. All right, 
Now, uh, what I will do for you is um, I'll give you just a kind of a condensed list for how to do partial fraction decomposition. We won't go through all the details in this video. We're going to break this up into some, some shorter videos. But for now, let's, let's start the steps for doing partial fraction decomposition where the function is equal to one polynomial over another. To make these easy to talk about, I called the numerator n of x, n for numerator, and I called the denominator d of x for denominator. So just, just be aware of that notation there. Okay. All right, so here, here's the steps. Uh, first of all, if this is what we call an improper fraction, if the numerator has a larger degree than the denominator or even equal to, then you're going to use long division. I'm not going to cover long division in this video. This is an algebra process where you would literally divide the smaller denominator into the larger numerator. Uh, not, I'm not going to work an example, but I'll show you. I'll show you an example. Like if you had, you know, I'm just making this up here, uh, x cubed minus 7x plus 10 divided by x minus 2. You could not do partial fraction decomposition on this guy yet because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So you would literally first need to divide x minus 2 into that denominator before you even could possibly do partial frac fraction decomposition if it was even necessary. Um, so that, that's what I'm talking about the degree of the numerator is bigger than the denominator you need to do long division first All right now so let's ass let's assume then that that's done and so the numerator's degree is smaller than the um, denominators so if that happens then next step number two factor the denominator completely normally these guys will be a quadratic this that's the most common um, oftentimes the denominator might be a cubic or it doesn't really matter whatever it is uh, factor that denominator into blank times blank times blank or you know a bunch of individual factors All right now here's where we're going to kind of stop for this video the partial fraction decomposition of this function kind of depends on what the factors of the denominator looked like okay um, and here's what I mean if the factors in the denominator are linear, right, as in like x minus 2, x plus 7, 3x minus 1, something like that, then you would decompose it a certain way. But if the uh, uh, factors of the denominator wind up being quadratic, then you do partial fraction decomposition a slightly different way. You, it has different terms that, that are contributed to the decomposition. Now those details I'll unpack in the next video, but uh, I'll just leave you with just kind of a, a little taste here. Um, let's look back at this example that, that we did right here. L look, at this, um, look at this denominator that we have right here. Uh, this, this one right here. Uh, we have x squared plus 2x minus 15. If we factored this guy, he would factor how? It would be an x and an x. We'd have a plus 5 and a minus 3, right? And sure enough, look at these denominators in the decomposition. You can see the terms in the decomposition have something, we're not really clear what yet, have something to do with the factors of your uh, denominator in your big rational expression. So uh, like I said, again, we'll unpack these details of um, linear factors or quadratic factors in the denominator in the upcoming videos, uh, but at least hopefully this gets you started down the right path of understanding partial fraction decomposition.